everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. This is Nicole with Topaz. In today's session, I'm happy to welcome back Joel Wolfson to present Keeping It Natural with Topaz Plugins. Hey, Joel. Hey, Nicole. Thanks. Joel is an internationally published photographer and imaging expert who conducts photo workshops worldwide from his native southwest to Italy, France, and other locales. His roster of notable clients include Newsweek, L17, Houghton Mifflin, and corporate clients such as Apple, AT&T, 3M, United Airlines, and Pillsbury. His technical articles on digital imaging have been translated for use in more than 30 countries, yet he's best known for the imagery you've seen here, the more artistic side and unexpected views of everyday places. So with that, I will go ahead and give Joel the screen. Thank you, Nicole. Hopefully everybody can see my screen now. Well, welcome everyone. It's uh, great to be back doing another webinar for Topaz. And Thanks to everyone for joining us today. Special thanks to those in the faraway time zones. Uh, as Nicole mentioned, today's topic is keeping it natural. And what motivated me to do this is that I think it's a really important part of storytelling. Usually the goal when we shoot is to try to tell a story or convey what we feel uh, with an image. And when we capture something beautiful that we see, we want to convey that to the viewer, whether it's a client or a family member or whether you're putting it on Facebook or Instagram. And what I see a lot is people getting carried away with saturation sliders and some of the controls in their imaging software. And then the image ends up being jarring instead of conveying the feel of being there. So I'm going to show you how some of my bread and butter plugins like Adjust and Clarity, Black and White Effects and Remask uh, make it easy to keep it natural. So before we jump in, I just want to mention real quick that I've, I do have a number of educational resources by way of my blog, my newsletter, archives of these webinars. Uh, Topaz also keeps archives of the webinars, articles and things like that. So if you want to make the best use of that, uh, probably the best thing to do is just sign up on my email list. Also, I would say keep an eye on Topaz's Pro Insights. Uh, it's a great spot on their website where um, not only I submit articles, but there are a lot of great pros out there that um, offer you some tips and techniques. So let's uh, get into it here. Those of you that have seen my webinars before know that uh, I use Lightroom as my main hub, so that's kind of my launching point for this whole thing. And I'm going to start with this image right here. <clears throat> so this is one of the cool little villages in Provence in the Vaucluse that we visited on my Villages of Provence workshop that I conducted this past May. And it has this great little road edged by a stone wall leading up to it. And of course, I took advantage of that for a nice little visual lead in. Takes you right up to the village with these centuries old buildings nestled in the mountains. Now, the goal here is to maintain a sense of depth by boosting the contrast and color, bringing back definition in the sky, and all the while trying to keep it natural. So basically, we want to go from this image to this image. Um, and I'll, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll show you how I do that. Uh, before we jump into the plugins, um, I need to do a little prep on the image. So this is our original image, and those of you that have uh, heard my webinars before or heard me speak, I always say raw is blah, and that's because this, this image here is taken from the raw file right out of the camera, and by, by its very nature, you know, raw is trying to capture the most information, and they do come out looking... Um, quite lackluster and flat and they need a little um, just um, basic contrast and saturation boost and things like that. So um, the other thing is uh, modern digital cameras when you're shooting in RAW capture a huge dynamic range. So I know that there's detail in this sky even though we don't see it here on the screen I saw it when I was there and I know the camera captured it we just need to bring it out. I think a lot of times photographers are shocked by uh, when they actually see and realize the amount of information that's captured. Um, I've seen that look of surprise when I'm conducting workshops, but um, if you're wondering why I didn't use HDR in a shot like this, um, it's because it would, it would actually be more time consuming because I'd be trying to line up clouds that were moving in the sky, trees and bushes blowing in the wind, and then I've got this bicyclist in the photo that I'd be spending a lot of time with. So I'm going to make use of all that great information that's already there, and you saw it in, in our goal image, this is where we're going to end up, um, which is more what the scene looked like. So 
I'm going to hop into um, Photoshop first. So from here, we can go into Photo, Edit In, and this will bring it into Photoshop. And I want to edit a copy. Now, I'm going to show you, as we go through this webinar today, I'm going to show you uh, different ways of doing things. Um, not everybody has Photoshop. Not everybody wants Photoshop. Um, I'm, I use Photoshop so that I can use the layers, but there are other ways that you can do things either from within the plugins or um, by using other layering programs like Photo Effects Lab and things like that. So um, the first thing, um, let me, you know, I'm going to back up a little bit first because what I want to do is take this image. I want to I want to do a little prep on this first in Lightroom. So I'm going to go to the develop module in Lightroom and what Lightroom allows you to do is to do virtual copy. So um, and the reason I'm doing this is is because we want to get that information in the sky. So um, I'm going to go create virtual copy which is also uh, command apostrophe or control apostrophe on a PC. And the reason I'm going to make a copy of it is because I'm going to optimize this one just for the sky. So the first thing I'm going to do, the sky is a highlight. I'll bring the highlights down quite a bit. You can already see we're starting to get a little more information there. And I don't know why Adobe buried this thing way at the bottom, but if <laughs> normally their stuff is sort of in order of how you use it. But on the right here where the tools are in Lightroom, at the very bottom is this thing called dehaze. Um, and it's, um, hate to say, it's kind of a crude version of clarity, but um, it does have its purpose, and we can use it here to um, kind of bring back some information. So um, by doing this, you can see I'm bringing the sky up. Now the rest of the image is going dark, and I'm not really concerned with that. What I'm concerned with is the sky, because we're going to use this exposure for that. And you can see it's pretty amazing how much detail and color and everything is was captured by the camera that we don't see because of the limitations of our monitor. and. Uh, the display stuff that we use. And, and you won't see it on the back of your camera either, so you just kind of have to um, figure out what kind of range you get just by practice. And the other thing I'm going to do is bump up the contrast just a little bit here. Um, and I can even bring down the exposure just a little bit to really accentuate the clouds. Now that's more dramatic than I'm going to need, but I'll show you later how we can control um, how much of that comes through on our image. So what I'm going to do now is I'll select both of these images and now when I go to the um, edit in menu I'm actually going to go down to the bottom there's some options for Photoshop and I'm going to say open as layers in Photoshop so now we have both of these as layers in Photoshop I'm going to move this is the one we're going to do most of the work on the other one is just going to be for the sky so I'm going to turn that one off for now with the little eye <clears throat> the little eyeball here in uh, Photoshop um, I'm down in the layers palette in the lower right here. So what I'm going to do um, now is we're going to go to work on this image. So first I want to make this my background layer. So I'm going to go up to the layer menu and I'm going to say background from layer. If you just open a single image in Photoshop, it'll come in as just a background layer. But since we open two, um, each is a layer, I had to make this my background. Now I don't ever want to um, alter my original image, so I'm going to make a copy. You can do, I did that by doing Command J. You can also do it by dragging it to the dog ear icon, just like a lot of things in Photoshop, there's many ways to do this. And I like to make a habit of renaming these things so I know what I'm doing with it. So um, the first place I'm going to go as far as a plugin is we're going to go into Clarity and that's where we're going to be doing most of the work. So I just label that to remind myself. I'm going to go over to the filter menu up on top here. I pull down to Topaz Labs and it gives me a sub menu with all of the Topaz filters and we're going to go into one called Clarity. Now for those of you that have not um, first thing I want to do is go to the lower right here. Now this is something I do and every time I go into a plugin is I hit the reset button because we want to start from our base level. What happens with the Topaz plugins is, is that um, it will default to the last settings you had in there and that's great as long as you're processing images that are similar. If you're jumping to different kinds of images it's always a, a good plan to hit that reset button to start out. 
So for those of you that haven't seen this before, the interface actually is somewhat similar to Lightroom, so if you're familiar with that, this will feel familiar, but we have over on the left uh, collections of presets. Presets are a combination of settings that um, Topaz provides you. You can also make your own and save them off if it's something you think you're going to use frequently. And speaking of presets, um, at the end of this, uh, when you get your email, uh, Nicole will be providing some presets that I put together that I'm going to be using in this webinar. So I have a set of presets that I took out of my sort of master set that are that are good for uh, keeping images natural. So um, the presets here on the left, you can um, hit the grid. I'll just show you how it works real quick. You can hit the grid here and it'll bring up whatever your collection is and give you a bunch of, um, it's, it's processing the previews now on the bottom here for all these presets and telling me to please wait. So um, there we are and there's all our all, all the different presets that I happen to have in my collection. So if you find one that you like, you can use that. There are all different collections here for different types of subjects. And like I said, you can save your own. So <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is um, it, the, the image, especially in the background, is a little bit hazy. So I happen to have this preset called dehaze. I actually have three versions of it. So I'll hit the normal first. And that's pretty close to where we want to get, but let me just try the plus and see. I actually like that one a little better. It's, it's a little dark and I might have to do a little work on it, but I think that's a little bit closer. Um, I'm going to close this off on the, um, on the left side. You can hit this little arrow and hide that. Over on the right are all of our tools. Um, so you can see there's a bunch of these sliders that have already been pre-adjusted from my preset. And I'm just going to go in and maybe tweak these a little bit. Um, the, the, the way it's divided up is micro contrast, meaning areas that have virtually no difference in their contrast, say, if you can see the hand up here that I'm moving around, um, an area like this where there's very little difference in tones uh, but from one pixel or one area to the next, all the way up to high contrast. So we have low and medium. Um, I'm going to back off on the medium a little bit. Um, just because it's, it, it's actually a tiny bit too contrasty there. Now what happens is as you build up the contrast using these sliders, um, the, the, obviously the darks get darker and the lights get lighter overall. Um, you can uh, you move this high contrast slider and actually I do this quite a bit where these three will be in a positive direction and this will be in a negative direction uh, to kind of take away those extremes. And you can see we're already getting a lot of the way where we want to be. Um, I'll hold, when I hold down the space bar, that gives me a before. So there's the before, there's the after, and we're getting very close to where we want to be on this. Um, the neat thing is you have this tone level control too to, down here where you can kind of tweak those things. So we can still maintain that sense of depth we're getting from the clarity sliders uh, in adjusting the contrast, but you notice um, in my preset I have the black level bumped up and um, that's probably about where I'm going to leave it. Maybe I'll bump it up a little more. What, what I like to do is go to the histogram. See, it, it defaults to the navigator up on top here. If, if I go up to the histogram button, I can see a histogram. And one way to use this black level slider is, is just to keep moving it until those black levels hug the left. So there I'm, I'm totally off of it. And I think where I was was probably a pretty good level. And of course, you can always zoom in too and just look at some shadow areas and then just use the before. There's the before and there's the after. So I, I don't see my shadows blocking up. I still seem to have detail in them. I have some real blacks in there now and I certainly have a lot better sense of depth. And um, the, only, the only other thing I might do here is just... Um, back off on the white level a little bit and overall the thing is looking a little bit dark to me in these in you know most of it is a mid-tone and so I'm just gonna bump that up a little bit and just kinda lighten my image here and that's looking pretty good somewhere in the 20-ish range so let's look at that overall again now there's only uh, one more thing I might do here I think that's looking pretty great um, if we, I'm going to magnify this again because if we, 
uh, I just want to point out a couple things because this is a really cool control I'm about to show you in clarity and that is um, the bicyclist the blue jacket was a much more vivid blue and this is another this is very subtle um, uh, but if you've ever been to Provence if you look back where this hand is and there's some shutters back here that periwinkle blue my wife informed me that it's called periwinkle but anyway that that Periwinkle blue um, is very classic in Provence, and in both the case of the jacket and the blue back here, it's a little undersaturated. So if we go down on the right here to this hue saturation and luminance um, dialog, this um, we we can break out all the colors are broken out, and we can individually uh, for each color adjust hue saturation luminance or do an overall. So my preset, if you look when I go to saturation bumps up the saturation a little bit because uh, generally with, with a raw image um, we tend to be undersaturated. So I think that overall saturation, most of the colors in here look pretty good to me and the only thing is the blue is lacking. So if I go down to the blue slider, now if you're not sure whether this is aqua or blue or what the color is, you just move the slider to an extreme and you'll see look how crazy blue um, the shirt goes here or the jacket and those and those shutters in the back likewise if I go the other way it goes completely gray so I'm just gonna um, bump it up a little bit just to to get the main thing is that's really visible is the jacket I'm just pointing out the shutters because that's a detail that someone who's been to Provence will notice and I think that's a lot better the way it is there um, my greens are maybe just ever so slightly vivid so um, first I want to find out whether the greens are really yellows or greens so I can take the green slider move that to an extreme and um, that definitely is affecting the green so I'm just gonna back off just a hair it's very subtle but I want this to be realistic the whole idea here is to keep it natural so um, let me zoom back down so we can look at an overall and and I think we're pretty much done other than the sky remember we still have this washed out sky we need to deal with so I'm gonna say okay that'll bring me back into my layer in Photoshop so let me enlarge it just a little bit so you can see better now if I uncheck the clarity layer that we just worked on there's where we started there's where we ended up with the clarity adjustments now the last thing I want to do is to add the sky so let me click on that layer now again you know we can't use this image because it's way too dark and the rest we just want to isolate the sky and then adjust that so I'll click on this layer and I'm going to use another one of my favorite plugins go up to the filter menu Topaz Labs and this is called Remask which in my opinion is the best masking program out there so what masking does is that's a way for us to selectively block out or let in a part of the image and you see when it opens it looks very different than the other plugin we were in and it does look different from all of the other Topaz plugins because this one is just made for masking there aren't a bunch of image adjustments on here like like the other plugins. So all we're doing here is we want to selectively cut out or keep certain parts of the image. In this case, we want the sky. And actually, th this plugin is deceivingly simple. It's very simple to use, but it's it's very sophisticated in terms of what it does. So our tool palette is over on the left here, and that's pretty much the crux of the program. And and Topaz has made it very simple. So green is it's color coded green is what we keep red is what we get rid of that's the cut and the blue is the compute and then we have it uh, brushes on the top and fills or sort of like a bucket tool on the bottom and so the idea here is we want to define our transition so our border so you can see uh, my little blue cursor moving around here and as I increase you know I can increase the brush size and it's bigger so my rule of thumb here for this thing is to give yourself just enough size that when your hand moves a little bit you won't go off the border but um, not so big that you're taking in stuff that you don't want to take in so let me I'm just going to magnify the image because it'll be easier to see that way and um, I think the compute brush is a pretty good size here uh, to do this and so I'm switching to a to a tablet here because I just think it's easier to do with a stylus so all I'm gonna do is trace along the edge here with this compute brush and the idea is to try to keep 
uh, the bullseye over the edge and not go too far on either side of this. I'll show you another little uh, shortcut thing too is if you have a fairly long straight line like here you can just move the cursor to your the spot where you want to end up, hold down the shift key and click and that you know that saves you a lot of moving around sometimes. Now this is this is one of the you know things you'll run into that's a little trickier to mask if you were trying to mask in another program I think you'll see with all these trees and there's um, spaces in the trees with the branches and everything where the sky's bleeding through and normally that's a difficult task for masking but I think you'll see that uh, Topaz is um, that this remask program handles it quite well alright so there I've got my line I'm gonna shrink back down here and what I'm going to do is grab the bucket tool. So remember, we want to keep the sky. Um, so green is keep. So right now, it's keeping everything. Um, I'm going to use the bucket tool because we have a distinct border here. And all I have to do is one click, and voila, the whole thing has turned red. My next task is just to hit the compute button to compute this mask. And not only is it quick, but it, it creates a, a really amazing mask. And this isn't going to take much tweaking to, to, to have it be perfect. Now what I just did here is in the upper right hand corner I can change the views. So there's a single window, I can do a split window, I can even do four quadrants and what that allows me to do is to see different aspects of the view. So you see there's tabs to do that. I'm going to leave it on the mask on the left. Um, there's our keep, meaning that's what we're keeping is the sky. There's our cut. Now just because um, if I want to tweak this mask it's easier to see the details um, by looking at the cut and that's why they give you these options. If I look at the keep I'm just looking at clouds so it's not quite as easy to tell what's happening with my mask. So that's just a personal preference. Now you have this funny checkerboard background which is the, just like the transparent view in Photoshop and if you go down to the lower right here you notice a bunch more tools appeared once we created the mask and these are all um, all these tools down here are to help you tweak the mask. I mean, we're, we're most of the way there. This mask already looks great. Let me just um, go back to my uh, magnified view here. So this mask is already looking great, but it's a little hard to tell what's going on with that checkered background, so instead I'm going to use a solid color. Um, we'll keep the mask view on the left, and um, if you don't like that color, you can change it. There's a button that says Select New Color. Um, I'll just leave it on my red and say okay. Uh, red is good for this one because it's the opposite of green and mostly we have green up here so it allows us to see what's going on with the mask. So not only can I look on the left here to see what's going on with the mask but I can look on the right. So if we go over here you can see a couple areas where it's not totally clean and I'm going to go back to my brush tools here and if you look this little, if you were really astute, you would see that this magic brush thing appeared and it defaults to on. And this magic brush thing is wonderful. Um, and I'll show you how it works. Basically, you just, with the magic, which once you're in magic brush mode and the mask is made and you want to tweak it, you just barely touch the area like here. I hope you can see this. It's just a little bit gray. So remember that white reveals and black conceals and gray is in between. We want a distinct line here. You know, we don't want the sky bleeding through on the mountains or vice versa. So all I have to do is just touch this and it just basically shrink wraps down there. And I can, I can do the same thing with the cut brush too. Um, in fact, I'll do it on this side. You can do it in any of the views. So if you look over here where my cursor is on the far right, you can see that there's some red bleeding through. So the, so the cloud image is actually bleeding through here. So um, all I have to do again with the magic brush is just touch that and it kind of just shrink wraps right up to the edge and you can see it happening over on the uh, left. So I can either use the left or the right whether I prefer using my image view or just the mask view. <clears throat> There's another option I'm not going to get into right now but just to point it out this is this is a new the newest version of Remask and they've added these things in here is this image and that allows you if you're compositing two different images um, you can bring up the image and move it around and orient it and see what's going on between your mast area and the image. So that's that's a pretty neat feature. I wish I could spend all day showing you all of the features of all of these plugins, but I'm just trying to keep with our theme here. So I think our mask is looking pretty good. I'll just I'll just run over real quick and see now. Um, there's a couple 
couple areas I could just do my little magic brush here to clean them up a little bit. But overall, this is looking quite good. And I'm just going to say OK. So <clears throat> you notice it created a new layer for me. That's an option in the plugin. There's some preferences. And so I can just get rid of that um, extra layer. So now you see I, I, um, I have the sky coming through, but it's a little too much. It doesn't look real compared to the rest of the photo. Uh, so what I, this is what I was talking about before. We're in this layer. All I, all I have to do is simply adjust the opacity of this layer. So if I go to zero, that's the way it was before we added the darkened version of the image for the sky. And I'm probably going to be somewhere in the middle is going to make it look most realistic. So somewhere in the, what, 50, 60 percent range. So you can see because of the exposure of the image, it's, it's, it starts getting a little lighter up towards the top of the hills, which is natural. It's closer to the light source. And I think this looks very natural. So there we are. We've got, we've got our final image. Um, that information was all there, even though it didn't look like it. This is where we started. Um, we added in. I'm turning on the layers one by one here, by the way. That's what this little eyeball thing does in the lower right, if you're not that familiar with Photoshop. Um, so that turns on the clarity layer. We did the lion's share of the work in there, and then to get the sky in. And this was all just using one exposure. Um, and and we, we talked about HDR. I, I like to call this NDR, which is natural dynamic range. Um, HDR covers a broader area because some people use it for real uh, surreal looking things and sort of that grunge look and there's all different aspects to high dynamic range. Um, here we're going for the natural look. So um, we can save that off and we'll go back into Lightroom and there's our finished image and I'm just going to compare the two just so you can see. So on the right is where we started and on the left is where we ended up. And if you take away all the time I used to explain all this stuff, you're really just talking a few minutes uh, in clarity and really quick couple minutes in remask. And we turn the image on the right into the image on the left. And we still have, um, you know, a natural look to it, yet we still have that depth and everything we were looking for. And uh, trying to convey that um, that sense of depth and just the sense of being there, what it what it's like. So I am going to go on to another image and we're going to do something a little different here. So this is a black and white. Uh, this is uh, a local fishing on the Poipu coast in Kauai, uh, which is, I think, one of the more beautiful Hawaiian islands. Not like any of them suck, but uh, it's pretty cool. So. I was just out shooting shooting people on the coast here and I saw this guy fishing. So this is from the raw file out of the camera and again it's you know a little bit lackluster and where we want to go with it is right here. Um, something I teach in my black and white classes is that you get better black and whites if you shoot with that intention as a rule. So to me that when I saw the scene it was a natural black and white. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of color with it to begin with. Um, other than the water, the sky is a little grayish. Um, the, again, there was more detail in the sky, and I know the camera captured it. You can see it in this uh, black and white version, but I'll show you how I got there. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to um, go into a plugin called Adjust. If you're not familiar with that one, it's it's an awesome plugin. Um, I call it the magic exposure equalizer. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> I'll go to photo, edit in, we'll bring this one into Photoshop. And we'll enlarge that. So again, the first thing I want to do is duplicate this layer. Here, I'll show you another way to do it. I used Command J last time, bringing it down to the dog-eared icon here to duplicate the layer. Again, the idea being that we don't want to mess with our original image in case we have to go back to it so we keep that in a layer and just use duplicate layers to do these adjustments. So I put adjust on there so I know and in fact now you might say why don't I just go right into black and white effects and I'll tell you because um, 
those of you that have seen me do black and white but before, you know that um, my method is to, you're starting with a color image, my method is to take that color image and make it look gaudy. In other words, give it too much contrast, more than you would, that this is relative to how you would do it for a color image. So you want to give it extra contrast, extra saturation to the point where it looks just a little bit gaudy and that will give you a great transition to the black and white. It, it'll make for a better conversion if you pump those things up ahead of time. So that's just kind of my my workflow, my method for doing black and white. So before I go to black and white effects, which is Topaz's great black and white plugin, I am going to go to adjust, which is um, it is kind of a magic plugin. I'm going to hit the reset. That's remember I always start that way with the reset button. And what I want to do here is, um, I think I'll start with a preset here too. Now, um, we have kind of a, a hazy look to this image, so um, I might try the haze correction. And that's not a bad start for getting towards having it look a little gaudy, um, but I'm probably still going to do just a few tweaks here. So. I, I, I want to go over the layout real quick. It's very similar to the other plugins. It's like Clarity that we just saw. Collections are on your left um, of presets, and the individual presets for each collection um, are below that. And it's the same kind of thing. You can you can go to different collections, um, and you can, if you want, you can click on this grid pattern and get those um, samples of those. I'm going to leave it on my collection because these are the ones that um, that I've made for myself. And uh, the one that that we're going to use right here is the that we're starting with is this haze correct landscape. So over on the right, let me explain this. Uh, the the heart and soul of this program is the adaptive exposure, and that's what that does is it it truly adaptively adjusts your exposure. Normally, when you run an exposure slider up or down, it just makes the whole image lighter or darker. So if you're trying to bring up uh, highlights, um, you're going to lose other areas of the image. If you're trying to bring up shadows, then you might sacrifice the highlights and, and vice versa. So you have this constant battle, whereas this does it adaptively. So I'll just show you, I'll bring, I'll bring these sliders um, down. So as I bring up adaptive exposure, it's, it's trying to adaptively, you know, if I, if I move it way up, you can see it's bringing up both highlights, it's bringing up shadows without losing highlights. So I'm actually getting more detail in the highlights while I'm getting more detail in the shadows. Now if I go too far, it looks a little weird, so um, I'm probably going to be in like the mid-30s. Now the one below it is really key too, that's called regions, and, and right now it's treating the whole image as one piece essentially. As I move the regions over, it divides the photo up into pieces. If you imagine like a piece of graph paper over it, it, it is applying that adaptive exposure to each of those quadrants. So as I move this over, it's going to, um, it's going to divide it up into more pieces. So you can see there's treating it as one region. As I move it over here, um, say down to 20, it breaks it up, it adjusts all those quadrants separately and then puts them back together. So my rule of thumb is the more variation you have, the more pockets of differing exposure in an image, the more, the higher, the more regions you'll need and the higher amount of adaptive exposure you'll need. And they should, usually you don't have them too far apart from each other. But that's just a general rule of thumb. You really need to play around with this. It's, it's really kind of magical the way it works. Now the other thing I want to do here is um, is look at my details and then also my um, my saturation. So I'm going to go in order here uh, with these palettes. Let me just blow this up so you can see this better. And I, in fact, I can close off my presets here. So there's my before. Here, I'll move it over a little bit. There's my after. So this is before any adjustments. This is after. You can see we're definitely getting it's getting a lot more vivid. And part of my preset, um, another thing you, that, that Adjust allows you to do is to change the amount of detail that's in the image. And so this is where I had my settings. And those, those aren't too bad. Um, I'm just going to adjust those a little bit. So 
I think the, str the detail strength I just want to bring up a little. Um, so now I, I've got a little more sharpness in those waves, a little more definition in the guy fishing here. And uh, there's detail and de detail boost, so the detail boost brings up the finer details. And, and that's pretty good where it is. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. And the next thing I want to do is jump down to the color box here. Now there, uh, saturation works the same way as adaptive exposure. It, it looks at the various uh, amounts of saturation in the image and adjusts it adaptively. This you'll find is a lot more subtle than the adaptive exposure. And I'll just I'll bring it up a little bit. And then you can also adjust the overall saturation just like you might see in Photoshop or Lightroom. And there's a saturation boost, which is a lot like vibrance in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So what I'm going to do here is bring up the overall saturation a little. Remember, we're not quite to the gaudy point here, and I'm going to even bring up the boost a little bit too. So now we're starting to look gaudy, right? I mean, those colors are getting pretty gaudy. It's not realistic at all, but it's going to make a nice conversion. I have a fairly big problem, though, and I'll shrink it back down, and that is these foreground rocks. Um, they're just, they compete way too much with the rest of the image. So there's a couple ways to handle this. One is if you do have Photoshop or some kind of layering program, you can bring it back in there and create a mask and mask that out. But um, you can also do that right from within Topaz Adjust here. So if I scroll down to local adjustments, I have a bunch of different options here, dodging, burning, etc. I'm going to pick the brush out, which literally means I can brush out my effect. And these brush controls are what you'd normally see, the size, uh, the opacity of the brush, um, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to I'm going to put the opacity up to 100% or 1.0 because um, I, I want to just take these down to the way they were before. Uh, the only thing that's a little different on here is this edge aware thing. And what that does is, is it detects the tone and color underneath the bullseye of your brush and it will it will only brush out that tone so let's say I was brushing on the water which is all kind of a bluish tone and it would um, it would not affect the rocks even if I spilled over there but in this case I don't need to do that and I'm just gonna start brushing almost to the very edge here and then I'm gonna switch to that to that edge aware Okay, so now I've taken out the effect. Um, I've just got a little bit up here to work on, so I'm going to just go to a smaller brush. And, oops, um, I am going to, I, I did want to use the edge aware. So that way, when I go across this, as long as I keep the bullseye on those rocks, um, I won't be, I won't be going, spilling into the water, and I can still bring down the exposure on these rocks. So um, I think that's looking pretty good few of the rocks here maybe and you can you can see from the the little mask here how how it's keeping in line with the edge here of the of the water so um, I think that's looking pretty good we're gonna say okay and bring this back into Photoshop so there we are. We have we have a really gaudy looking color image, and now that'll probably make a nice black and white for us. So I'm going to duplicate the layer again. I'm going to rename it black and white effects, and then I'm going to go into black and white effects. So go down to Topaz Labs, go to black and white effects, and this is a nice conversion program and it allows you to do all sorts of different things with black and whites. Again, I'm going to go to the lower right, hit the reset. So now what it shows me is the neutral black and white. Um, I'm on the traditional collection here, and uh, again, you can, you, know, you can go into this grid thing and take a look at your different options um, and see if there's something you like. And you see that um, there, there are options in here for... Um, for toning and things like that too. This program really, and again, I don't have time to show you everything, but it does amazing things. If you like toning, you can do platinum, palladium, and cyanotypes, and sepia, and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I'm just going to start with the neutral and go from there. And actually, the neutral is a pretty good start.
Um, it, it's really a lot of the way where I want it to be. The only thing is the sky and the water are looking a little lackluster in spite of um, us, you know, making it gaudy. It would be a lot flatter looking if we didn't start that way, but we've got a good start. And what I want to do here is, um, those of you that know about filters in black and white, um, you probably, if you ever shot film, you would have used yellow and red filters a lot. And those darken the sky. If you remember in our color image, we had a little, the sky was fairly bluish and the water was definitely blue. So if I click on the yellow filter, um, by the way, I, as far as the layout, again, it's similar to the other ones we've looked at. Um, we have our collections on the left, along with um, uh, the individual presets and over on the right we have all our tools. Um, in the conversion uh, we've got all these different tools um, and up here these are kind of quick tools so this is a quick way to get a filter to adjust exposure or to do toning. So I'm going to click on the yellow filter um, and, and that's a, a little too much uh, but it's the right idea. You can see the water went very dark and the sky um, darkened up and we got more definition. So I'm holding down the space bar. That gives me the before view. There's the after view. So I like the effect of the yellow filter, but there's too much effect. So I'm just going to take this strength slider, and I'm going to bring it down to a more reasonable level. And I like it a lot there. The only thing is I might go into the basic exposure here and bump up the contrast just a hair. Um, and the only thing left really is I, I like the look of this in general, but here, let me... Let me uh, zoom in a little bit. But right now, here I'll go. I'll go down to 50%. I, the our our fisherman guy here looks. Um, uh, his skin is a little bit too dark, so I want to lighten him up. Yes, he's Hawaiian and he's got a suntan and all that, but he just isn't standing out enough. So um, what I'm going to do is I have local adjustments here too, just like I did in the other plugin. And I'm going to go to the Dodge, which it's on right now, and we're going to brush out, um, we're going to lighten his skin, essentially. So let me see. I'll... All right, so let's adjust our brush here. I want a fairly small here. I'm going to magnify it so we can work just on him. And let's just put a little bit of a feather edge on there and I'm going to turn the edge of wear all the way up because I just want to and I'll even bring the brush size down here um, I just want to isolate his skin now um, what I'm going to do is turn up the opacity here a little bit and I'll turn up and, and you can adjust the overall strength too so I'm going to bring that up to more than I really want and I'm going to brush it in and this, by having it turned higher than I really want it, um, it just allows me to see where I'm brushing more easily and isolate. And you can see with that, um, with that edge of wear, we're staying within the edges. Now that's way too much, so I'm going to just bring that down. Yeah, I'm going to bring it down quite a bit. Probably right in there is good. So there's there's our before and after the whole image, but you can also use just this checkbox to see the before and after of his skin. So all we did was light, lighten him up just a little bit. And let's take one quick look at our overall again. And voila, there we go. So let's see, I'm going to try to do another image really quick here. Yeah, let me just, uh, I'll just do my quick comparison here so you can see. There's our before on the left, there's our after on the right. We have a, a nice black and white with just a couple uh, couple plugins and a couple quick trips in into each one. All right, so this is um, several weeks ago when I was in Hawaii. Um, I, I had one of the most fun shoots of my life. It was a beautiful morning. I did the shoot from a doors off helicopter. Uh, this is on the north end of the same island, Kauai, um, in, on one of the more spectacular coastlines anywhere called the Nepali Coast. And so from the air with a wide-angle lens, I was capturing a huge range of colors and tones and contrast, and I wanted to try and convey that sense of awe that I felt looking at this thing. So 
this this is how it looked and and it's just amazing if if you've ever been there the colors are just so vibrant the the greens the greenery is like electric and you have this rugged coastline this is where I started so this is from the raw image out of the file and what I'm gonna do is um, start out going into adjust so we'll go to Photoshop I'm going to duplicate my layer and remember adjust is our sort of magic um, exposure adjuster. Go to filter, Topaz Labs, adjust. Now again I'm going to reset it, that's way off the charts there. And I'm going to use another plug in this, again this is one that you'll get in my collection. Um, Nicole's going to provide a downlink load for you to get these presets. But I have one that I use a lot called One Step Raw Optimize. I click on that and, and I'm almost all the way there for what I want. The only thing I really want to do here is um, remember we're trying to keep it natural. Now if you haven't seen this before it's, it's like crazy colorful um, and, and it's all pretty accurate except for the water. So if, let me go back down to, you know, I'll go to 50% view. If you look at this, the, the, um, there's sort of spot, spots of light because the clouds are intermittent. So you've got some areas in shadow, some area in bright sun. Because the water is in shadow, it, it's a little darker and it's just looking too saturated. The color in the rest of the image is pretty accurate. Um, so this layout is pretty much the same. Um, as uh, this is the one we used before and I can go to my local adjustments and again I can go to the brush out and what I, I'll just get a nice big brush here and I don't really want that much of the edge aware and then I'm just gonna brush out here. I'm just gonna brush out that effect on the water so now to me the water looks a lot more natural. So I'm going to say OK. And we're most of the way there. The only other thing I want to do to this is there, there's such a sense of depth when you're there and, and we got a lot of that just from using adjust but I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to go into clarity. Clarity is the master of adding a sense of depth to your images. I used to have these elaborate um, actions in Photoshop to try to do what just takes a, a few seconds or a minute using clarity. I used to do these elaborate things to, to get a, a contrast boost in the midtones. So we'll just go into clarity here. And mainly I just want to bring up the, the low and the medium contrast to do this. Let me turn off these um, presets. So that's pretty good. I'll do some in the medium. And again, remember we have our, our um, black levels got a little, uh, we got a little too black in the black, so we can bring that back up again just like we did before. And I think the high contrast, I'm going to bring that down a little bit too. And now I, I think that's looking pretty good. And let's just enlarge that. All right, so if I hold down the space bar, that here, I want to go down one magnification so we get a little overall sense so you can see the sense of depth here. That's where we started with adjust, and that's still pretty good. You know, adjust brought a lot of it back. We it certainly adjust brought back our proper exposure, the texture and the sky with the blue and everything um, and there's the after with clarity so it's just a little tweak and voila there we are that's our that's our finished image this is where we started and if I click on the top layer here that's where we ended up and I'll jump back into Lightroom and we can do a before and after And there we are. We went from the image on the left to the image on the right. And the whole time, um, 
keeping this thing pretty natural looking. If you, like I say, if you've been there, the, the colors are just crazy. We had to um, back off on the water a little bit. So there you are. Um, that took no time at all, and, and we went from what you see on the left to you see on the right. So, Thank you so much, Joel. This was a great session. Well, thank you, Nicole, and thank you, everybody, for attending. I, I really had fun. This stuff's very exciting for me, and I wish I had more time, but um, that's it, and thank you very much. <laughs> you can follow Joel at joelwolfson.com and check out his blog at photographerswife.com. You can also get to his blog from his website. If you have any questions, you can contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com. And with that, I think I will say goodbye to all of you. Thank you so much, Joel, again. Thank you, Nicole, and thank you, everyone, for attending. I really appreciate it and hope I'll see you again soon. And thanks again, everybody. Have a good afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you are, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.